It was 10.13 p.m. when the screaming finally stopped. The monitors had yet to reveal to us what had occurred in those three rooms. As soon as the screaming ended, Zimmerman stood and dismissed us all for the night, adding that we were all forbidden to come back into the compound until 10 o'clock a.m. tomorrow morning. Not like any of us wanted to, anyway. We all solemnly made our way out of the compound and towards the cabins and settled in for the night. I feel it is safe to say that not all of us slept well that night, and I was certainly not one of them. The following morning, all of the staff had arrived at the entrance building. We all stood inside, exchanging tired or nervous looks as we waited for Zimmerman to arrive and open the hatch that concealed the ladder. I could see palpable fear in the eyes of some of us, while others did not seem to have been even remotely affected by what happened last night. Zimmerman showed up five minutes after ten apologizing for his tardiness as he came through the door of the entrance building. He opened the hatch and without any hesitation began descending the ladder downwards into the black abyss. He almost seemed enthusiastic. I was the first to follow behind Zimmerman's dark descent into the facility. It seemed that the farther I climbed down, the more the darkness closed in on me, as if it were trying to swallow me whole. And as I climbed deeper, I couldn't help but feel that this place was… different somehow. While before, there was only the unsettling concrete hallways and rooms, now there was something else. Something made the eeriness feel so real and personified. I felt like a horrible and gruesome scene awaited us down there, but I continued climbing downward, despite my fear and hesitation. This was no longer just a spooky bunker. There was darkness and malevolence in the air. A true evil now lived here, and I could feel it. We all could. I finally felt my foot touch ground and let out a sigh of relief to be on solid ground. Almost as if on cue, the light bulbs came alive, dousing the room in their warm and welcome light. Zimmerman must have turned on the power, I thought. I allowed myself to take a couple seconds to examine the control room. It was exactly as we had left it last night, for which I gave a silent and thankful prayer. It was almost as if nothing unusual had ever happened. I shook myself from thoughts as I remembered the static-filled monitors from the night before. I let my eyes slowly make their way towards the monitor on the wall, anticipating the grim and fearful scenes that would be on them. My attention was first grabbed by monitor 1 and 3, which were still pure static. It would have been a small relief. But then, the motionless image on monitor 2 caught my eye. Room 2 was entirely still and everything seemed untouched. I couldn't help but gasp as I noticed the only thing that was different. The woman lay in the center of the small concrete room. An expression of fear and terror was frozen into her gaunt face as she lay silent and lifeless on her back. Zimmerman's expression turned angry when he saw this. He ordered that the second monitor be turned off, 
and it was. We didn't ask why. It's not like any of us wanted to see the dreadful scene any longer. He also ordered that if the images of Monitor 1 and 3 did not return within the next two hours, the security team would be sent to investigate the rooms. The team nodded at hearing this. They made it seem as if they had no fear. But I could see it in their eyes. The subtly loud tick-tock of the clock was the only sound that echoed through the control room while I stared at the monitors. An hour and fifty minutes had gone by, and static was still all that occupied monitor one and three. All of the other staff members were working, except me. This was due to the fact that the project had been completely injury-free thus far, so I essentially had nothing to do but wait for someone to hurt themselves. Zimmerman, a couple of his colleagues and I were the only ones that occupied the room. They quietly chatted amongst each other on the other side of the room while I spent my time reading and pondering the situation I currently found myself in. I had clearly made a mistake coming here. The corpse lying in room two was evidence enough of this, and God only knew what awaited us in room one and three. My thoughts were soon interrupted as Monitor 3's image returned. The clear image now displayed on the screen made everyone's eyes noticeably widen. What was displayed on the monitor was horrifying. A humanoid thing stood in the center of the room staring directly at the camera, unmoving. It was wearing the jumpsuit that Subject 3 had been issued, but this clearly was not the same man that had entered the room. What caught my attention first were its eyes. They were solid black and twice the size of normal human eyes. So endless and so cold. Its head had also grown with the eyes in such a symmetrical and unsettling manner. The being had also shed all of the hair it once had, and even from the monitor, I could see how unnaturally smooth and clear its skin was. It had also seemingly grown in height and stature which could be seen in the fact that the jumpsuit was now obviously far too small for its wearer. Its limbs had grown especially long. Its arms hung almost as low as the creature's knees. What we were looking at was in no way the same man we had sent inside. Fear. Fear was all I felt as I continued to stare into the monitor at the thing in the room. And my fear seemed to be shared by those around me, which made me feel kind of good. It may sound awful, but it was a bit satisfying to see that Zimmerman and his colleagues could feel fear too. But at the same time, it was worrying, because this showed that this was not a part of Zimmerman's plan. Something had gone wrong. We all stared into the monitor at the thing despite our fear. It was almost as if we were all in a trance. My already present fear began to grow and spread rapidly through my body as I became lost in the creature's eyes, trapped in its terrifyingly hypnotic gaze. After what felt like forever, I managed to break eye contact with the creature and divert my attention from the monitor. And when I did so, 
I felt my fear levels drop considerably. After a short while, Zimmerman ordered his security team to make their way to Subject 1's door, just as he said he would do. The security team left without question, armed only with batons and pistols. I focused my attention on watching the men progress through the hallways towards Subject 1's room via the cameras. Even through the not-so-high-quality cameras, it wasn't hard to tell that these men were afraid of what awaited them. Their heads were downcast as they walked. They did not possess the same confidence within them that they did when this project began. They looked like scared boys being sent off to a terrible war. Eventually, they made it to the door. We had perfect vision of them and the door via the hallway camera. One of them said something through one of their walkie-talkies and made a motion towards the camera. In response, one of Zimmerman's colleagues buzzed the door open. The men already had their pistols out by the time the button was pushed. Slowly, the door began to open. We all watched eagerly as the men began to approach the door guns aimed inside. Suddenly, and without warning, there was a loud shriek, as if something bounded out of the room at the men. The monitor turned into static. Immediately, we could hear screaming echoing down the hallways, followed shortly after by the distinct sound of gunshots. We could do nothing but wait. After a couple minutes, the screaming and the gunshots stopped. We all waited, waited, and prayed, hoping that whatever bounded at them from the room would not be the one to return to the control center. After a couple more minutes, three of the men came back, carrying with them the corpse of the fourth. He had massive cuts covering his chest and his face was shredded. You couldn't even tell who he was anymore, or even that he was human. I was used to gore, being a doctor and all, so I felt somewhat unfazed by the mass of shredded flesh and bloodied meat they had carried with them. But many of the others went pale and vomited. The security team all wore emotionless expressions and eyes filled with terror. One of the men finally looked up at us. He stared at us for a while with those wide eyes of his. It's dead. He finally managed to mutter in a shaken and scared voice.